Hey, 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 David Wynn here. Today is a beautiful day to learn something new. I've been preparing a little lesson here for everybody on Gwent terminology. Uh, by the end of this video, I hope to be able to explain some of the more commonly used phrases within Gwent. And just for background, um, I've been playing Gwent for about a year now. And as I've played Gwent in that time frame, I've come across a lot of phrases and terminology that at first I didn't quite fully understand. Um, but as I've played uh, the game more and continued to gain experience, uh, a lot of these like terms and like, phrases started to make more sense to me. So today I hope to be able to, you know, pass some of that knowledge over to you, and hopefully together we can, you know, learn and grow and just become better quick players. Um, so with that said, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hopefully I'll be able to continue to bring you more exciting quick content in the future. And also leave a like and feel free to comment below. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. So here I have a table of contents. Um, we'll be covering 10 topics today. Um, so we're going back to school for a little bit. Um, the first one will be about rounds and phrases that you commonly see uh, regarding rounds. Then we'll get into some general card game words, the types of cards and decks. And then I have some other types of decks I wanted to sh show as well as the polarized cards decks get built around. And then we'll talk a little bit about verb play cards and how some cards can actually uh, change from nouns to verbs. Um, and then we'll talk about some more commonly used cards and cards that are commonly abbreviated. And then we'll talk about terms used within deck building and finish off with the card updates. So let's continue here. So blue coin. Blue coin means going first. So if you have blue coin, you're going first. Conversely, red coin means going second. So if you have the red coin, that means you're going second. Um, most of the time, you would prefer to go second because it's more reactive, right? Um, but if you do go first, there's a concept in Quint uh, called a stratagem. So this stratagem allows you to, you know, minimize the, the downside of going first. Uh, okay, so we'll get into bleeding. Um, so you often probably have heard of the phrase bleed, or the term bleed. So what does that mean? Um, basically, bleeding is when a player wins the first round, and continues to play into the second round to hopefully force the opponent to play or waste certain good cards or combos so that would improve your chances of winning the third round. So generally speaking you do want to bleed um, if you win the first round because it usually increases your chances of winning but it really depends um, on your deck as well as your opponent's decks. Okay, uh, so losing on even. When a player loses the round with the same amount of cards left in hand as the opponent. Conversely, winning on even. When a player wins the round with the same amount of cards left in the hand as the opponent. So losing on even is not good. You never ever ever want to lose uneven, unless you have uh, some carryover developed on the board in the form of like a resilient unit, then it's it's okay, I guess, to lose uneven in that case. Um, because technically you're not losing uneven in that case, you have an extra you know, unit that gets carried over to the next round. 
um, winning on even, you always want to try to win on even if possible. That way, you always have the option of dry passing to a third round to get card advantage. You know, depending on the matchup that you're in. Uh, so to have reach, to be able to exceed your opponent's total score if the opponent were to pass in the next turn. So if I have a card in my deck that's, let's say, 12 power, that means, uh, and if I happen to have that card in my hand, then I have a reach of 12, let's say. So if my opponent passes uh, and he's only up by like 11, then I have reach because I can just play the 12 point card and still be able to win that round. To have final say, the person who plays the last card at the end of the game has final say, or commonly referred to as last say. So final say is very desirable because if you have final say, the last card that you play cannot be answered by the opponent. So let's say you have like a tall unit and it's very desirable for you to have last say um, with that kind of deck. Um, so you might have noticed uh, another bullet point get just added here because I forgot to include dry passing, which I kind of talked about. Um, but try passing is when you win the first round and immediately pass the second round to go into a longer third round. And the reason you would try pass is if you have an engine deck that would gain more value in the long round, or if you can't afford to risk losing card advantage by bleeding. All right. So here is a slide on general card game words. Um, so this is some of the common terminology that you'll see across different card games, not just including Gwen. So thin, the act of reducing the number of cards in your deck. Brick is when you draw a card that shouldn't be played from hand. Tutor is a card that lets you play another specific card from your deck, at the same time also thinning your deck. Mulligan is to shuffle away a card in your opening hand. Generally, you want to shuffle away bricks. Um, and here are some examples of a thinning card in the Shield Maidens here. Um, bricks that you want to mulligan away include Knickers and Roach. Example of a thinning card. Um, and also a tutor, I should say. So one Iromancy. Let's keep it going. Alright, so a type of cards and decks that you might encounter, um, an engine is any unit that can manufacture points over the duration of a round. It's generally high ceiling but low floor power. Control is any card that prevents other cards from either existing or functioning as intended. Point slam is any card that can produce a lot of points immediately. Swarm are decks that like to swarm the board with low powered units. Mid range decks have units that are not in the too high or too low range, between 3 and 8 power, for example. And then tall decks like to go tall uh, with their units by using engines or tall point slam cards. So some examples of engine decks include Shield Wall, Symbiosis. Um, some examples of control decks include Unitless, Traps. Some examples of Point Slam decks include Lippy, um, as well as Monsters. Examples of Swarm decks include Blue Stripes Commandos, Araka Swarm. Examples of mid-range decks include Shield Wall, um, also Skellige Warriors, 
example of tall decks include monster decks, passive decks, hidden cash. All right, let's continue. Other types of decks. Um, so this this slide will cover some of the more notorious types of decks, um, but I thought you know it's something you should also be familiar with. Um, clog to put unwanted cards in your opponent's deck. Uh, mill to remove cards from your opponent's deck. Unitless it's an archetype that runs the minimum amount of units, and the units are generally uninteractive. Um, so units generally have immune, uh, which is a status in Gwen. Uninteractive is when a player cannot interact with the opponent's side of the board. So let's say your opponent has a unit that has immune on his side of the field. Well, you can't really do anything to his unit, so that's considered uninteractive. Um, or let's say your opponent didn't have anything on his side of the board. Um, same same thing applies there. Uh, carryover. Points that get applied to cards on the field, hand, deck, or graveyard that get carried over to future rounds. All right. So now we get into some of the polarized cards that decks will get built around. And here I highlight uh, four of the main ones. So we have Kelly, which is short for Keltulis. Uh, we have Shoop, which is short for Shoop Stays Off. We have Nova, which is short for Siri Nova. And we have Ball, which is short for Masquerade Ball. So if you see any of these terms at any point, um, in Gwent, they're referring to you know, these specific cards or these specific decks in Gwent. Okay, so now we get to the interesting slide about verb play cards. Um, and as I mentioned before, like some cards are actually nouns, but they can be converted to being verbs um, when players like to talk about the past tense of games. Um, so you often hear phrases like my units got yerdened or yerdened at the end of the match or I lost because I got ignied uh, by not playing around igni, for example. Um, Philippa, when a unit gets seized by the Philippa Elhart card. Um, heat waved, when a player gets a unit or artifact vanished by the Karathi heat wave card. And there's uh, more cards here that you can, you know, go through the list here. Um, these are what I found to be the most common um, used, like, verb cards, I, I would say. Um, so you'll come across a, this terminology a lot uh, on uh, Gwent forums, like Reddit, and if you watch, you know, your favorite streamers, they might have used this phrase more than once. Um, so it's good to be familiar with. So some of the more commonly used cards um, can also be referred to as other names. So I wanted to cover that as well. Um, so one Iro is really short for the one Iro Mancy card. Uh, defender. It's a defender is a card that um, will protect the other units on the same row, and Defender is what most players call their faction-specific defender card, um, even though they all have different names. So here I show a picture of each of the faction-specific defenders. And to be honest with you, like I've been playing for about a year and I still don't know like each of their individual names, or I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Um, so I find that it's not really been necessary because a lot of players and like um, people who just talk within the community they always refer to their specific defender card as defender like play your defender first um, or my defender got yen boat for example is another common phrase you might hear um, boat boat refers to the flying redonian card in syndicate 
Doggo refers to the Knickers card. Piggy is another name for the Witch Apprentice card. Junior is short for Horse and Junior. Senior is short for Horse and Senior. And Bank refers to the Vivaldi Bank card in Syndicate. Alright. I wanted to do a slide on the commonly abbreviated cards as well, because um, you might come across abbreviations sometimes, so I wanted to you know, explain what you might encounter. Um, so AA is a very common abbreviation you'll see. It refers to amphibious assault. This is a tutor commonly used in Northern Realms decks. Uh, then we have ADC, which is which is abbreviated for Alzir's Double Cross. That's also a tutor, but it's a neutral card. And then we have COC, or Cock, Curse of Corruption. Um, and this is a neutral removal card. And then the last one I have here is IDR, which is just IDR. And I honestly don't know if this is actually an abbreviation, um, or if it's somehow related to IDR and the other card. But if you if you know, you know, feel free to leave a comment below. Okay, so some of the common terms you'll see in deck building are often here people talk about. Um, included the meta, net deck, and homebrew. So what's the meta, right? The meta is the current set of ranked competitive decks commonly used on the ladder and in pro rank. So every season the meta will change um, depending on new cards that get introduced, cards that get reworked, and also balance changes um, to leaders. And all of that converges to form a new meta. Um, so the meta changes every season, and um, you can always refer to <coughs> that set of rank competitive decks that's currently being used on ladder as the meta. Net deck is basically a deck copied from the meta. And a homebrew is a deck created by a player. It's generally more creative and fun, but it might not be as optimal. And now we have the last slide here, um, to, which talks about card updates terminology. So what is a buff? A buff is when a card gets updated to be better than it was before. A nerf is when a card gets updated to be worse than it was before. Um, so some examples of buffs include, um, in the most recent patch, we saw the Witcher Adip card get buffed from 5 provisions to becoming 4 provisions. So that was a provision buff. So now it made it easier for you to include the card index because it's one provision less right, than before. Um, an example of a nerf. Um, so Ice Terrasac, I believe, got nerfed from 11 provisions to 12 provisions, so that made it harder for certain Skelligate decks to include um, other cards to play along with Iced because uh, he now is more uh, one provision more expensive than before. So that's a nerf. Um, so there are other types of buffs and nerfs like regarding abilities and um, a card's power as well. Um, so power creep. When a new card gets introduced, that makes an old and often played card obsolete because the new card does what the old card does, but much better. Um, so power creep, an example of that could be um, the new blight maker and mage assassin combo for thinning has become so good that now most, if not all, I should say, like new card decks that were running the thinning package of Imperial Brigades and Hunting Packs 
they now have been replaced with the new blight maker and mage assassin combo. So you could say the Imperial Brigades and the Hunt Pack have become power crypt. And <laughs> lastly here I have a little bullet point here on Elder Bear. So we might come across this phrase in uh, Reddit forums mainly, but basically an Elder Bear is any six power unit with no ability or ability that gets locked during the game. So rendering that ability to useless basically, right? So cards that have high provisions, six power, and have an order ability are also commonly referred to as Elder Bears. And over time, this six power requirement has been relaxed, such that even five power units with order abilities can also be referred to as Elder Bears. Um, so here I have a picture of the Elder Bear. Here is a picture of a Whereat, which could also be considered an Elder Bear. And Damien, which is also commonly referred to as an Elder Bear because of his order locked ability. Um, so there we have it. Um, hopefully you guys learned something new today. Um, hopefully some of the terminology you've come across has become more clear. And if it's not yet, then as you gain more experience playing Gwen, um, I hope you know, you'll, be, you'll be able to apply some of the knowledge that you picked up in this video um, to understand some of the more common terminology that's used within the game. And I hope uh, this knowledge will help you become better. Um, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.